to expand on what a, I guess, what a multimedia artist is and what I've been working with is uh, I am um, also a musician. I, I do composition. I do uh, things in video art, uh, sound art, and um, drawing and photo and sculpture and, and stuff like that. Um, I kind of want to go over the basics, like the elements of what this installation is about, and then go over some of the concepts and ideas. Um, the the uh, models, these architectural models, are uh, designed in Illustrator and cut on a CNC machine, um, and uh, they're rolled steel, and they're uh, indented so they fold like an origami. So there's very, very little welding. Um, the same with the, the pedestals. The uh, photographs are printed on uh, clear plastic and they are uh, digitally manipulated through Photoshop. The drawings are pen and ink on architectural paper. The sound is from field recordings as well as sounds do uh, downloaded from the internet. And the um, aromatherapy is from a diffuser, and it's, uh, it smells our cedar, pine, and cinnamon. And then uh, some of the lighting is LED lights, as well as the uh, lower wattage bulbs dimmed. And then these are hand-blown uh, glass with uh, crystals inside of them. So um, as far as some of the ideas, uh, behind what I'm uh, uh, trying to achieve. Obviously, there are an, uh, artistic influences um, from uh, conceptual architect uh, Wellington Ryder uh, to uh, Brian Eno with the sound to uh, um, a whole host of others. Uh, and um, as far as like uh, texts that I've read, read about it, uh, I've read mostly architectural theories, uh, such as uh, Bacalard's Poetic of Space, and um, and as far as other sound artists, Anais uh, uh, Zinakis is one of my um, influences. So, as well as the the uh, program that I'm in is conceptual informational arts, and we work with a lot with technology, and. Um, and uh, of course, influences with my fellow professors and fellow classmates. So more important than all that is that these structures are from my memories and uh, current situation and future hope. And I like to explain my memories as something like the phenomenology of space. I like to um, call from uh, Bacillard's uh, explanation of what, what phenomenology is. To me, is like the spirits, the memories. Uh, every single building represents the building that I've been in. I've, uh, you know, there, there is a common dark thread throughout all of them from the, uh, the oppression of a religious, uh, you know, background to a deteriorating home, but there is also hope uh, that I like to convey in like more experimental architecture such as the uh, uh, the culture center uh, and um, so each building such as this is a commerce building which represents commerce and building and uh, you know offices and, and places I've worked at and also my kind of hatred towards corporate America as well is in there there's a home and uh, the home is, is probably what I mine most of my memories from. And when I talk about phenomenology of space, when you, for instance, if you think about your grandmother's attic, you don't think about the wood that it's built, but you think about the memories and the ideas and what it evokes. Even if you walk out here and you look up and you see the library be, being built, you don't necessarily think about the concrete and the steel and the glass. You think about you know, what, what that means in memories of past libraries, like. I grew up in Washington, D.C. I can, I can think about the Library of Congress and, and, and the Smithsonian and stuff like that. So, um, so I'm pulling from these memories. Uh, we have this, the, this, 
spiritual center. I grew up as a, I, I, you know, I had a, a divorced family, and they were a different kind of religions, from Judaism to Catholicism to Baptism. I was like shuffled around. Sunday was really confusing to me. <laughs> so, you know, and so I, I, I kind of like with these small little structures, I kind of own what I want my spiritual building to be about, and uh, I have. Um, the bridge behind it is, is sort of like a bridge of connectivity of different factions of religion and spiritual centers. And uh, so uh, that's kind of what that's partly about. Um, the building of um, the cultural center with the atrium of open-mindedness, the, uh, the vessel of knowledge, and the tree clock is just it, it, it gets closer to the idea of like hope and utopia. Like what would be a, a good center? What, what, what does the center represent? Education, learning, knowledge, open-mindedness. Uh, and uh, it's also a nod towards uh, the experimental architect, uh, Wellington Reiter, who has designs of other ways of uh, working with time, you know, measuring the, 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 the tree growing. Uh, as, as a form. And um, it also has to deal with the, the nature versus man kind of like tension going on with the parkland in the background and, and, and stuff like that. Um, the sound, uh, each, each building has its own sound that were, were grabbed from the internet or field recordings, such as like the elevator sounds of a building or the the dryer going, or the um, cat purr. There's a cat purr drone. Uh, you know, monks chanting, um, and children playing from different languages and different backgrounds. And how I how I edited it was that it was a they were all edited to fit together. So it's like a matrix of drones that are. You know, if you listen closer, you can hear some of the particulars, but if you step back, it's all supposed to be kind of in the same kind of frequency and be a meditative of sorts. Um, the smell is also supposed to evoke olfactory memories. Um, the sound is supposed to evoke oral memories. And um, the conceptual structures are supposed to evoke hope for the future and things like that. So um, I want to leave you with uh, a quote from Bacalard, and then I'll answer questions. So um, Bacalard says, if I were asked to name the chief benefit of the house, I should say the house shelters daydreaming, the house protects the dreamer, the house allows one to dream in peace. <laughs> <laughs>